Hey, everybody. This is Sheets, and welcome to the NHL season. Uh, look, been looking forward to this really since the end of last NHL season. Uh, for those of you that follow True DFS and follow my progress, uh, I've really taken to the sport as one of my staple uh, DFS sports. One of the reasons I enjoy it so much is it really challenges you to balance projections and correlation. Um, it's very similar to baseball and to League of Legends in that effect, where uh, when one player scores, it almost always impacts another player. Um, and to be able to balance the need for correlation in your lineups with getting just highly projected lineups for the individual players is uh, is something I enjoy uh, attempting to figure out. Um, in addition, when we really started to apply the Sims uh, last season, uh, it it really upped our our game as far as our ability to get high upside and yet contrarian lineups. And throughout our Discord channel, throughout our subscriber base, and myself as well, and we were able to secure some really really big single you know solo takedowns uh, in a in NHL. Um, and that's really what you're looking for uh, in GPP is getting that solo takedown. And uh, we 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 did very very well. Uh, combining uh, our processes. So what I'd like to do, at least for this first video, is just kind of give you a tour of, of what I think you guys should be doing with our tools and with SaberSim to build lineups. And I hope to, throughout the course of the year, be more active on a daily basis with the NHL. Uh, another I don't even want to make this announcement yet, really, but we also have a uh, an expert now, an NHL expert in, in our Discord channel, who's part of the team now, who is going to be providing content in some form. I don't know if he's going to be part of the actual lineup build or anything like that, but uh, to, to add good fundamental research along with our you know lineup building expertise, I think is a good combination. So here is your main TrueDFS site. So, so again... If you want to access projections straight from True DFS, you're just going to go to NHL and NHL projections. And then when there's a video, you'll see it under NHL videos. You'll also be pinged on YouTube if you follow the channel and things like that. And you're going to see several different uh, projections. So you're going to see Goldie's projections and you're going to see my projections. Now, this is separate from SaberSim. We're going to get to that in a second. So... If you want to access our projections, or this, these are mine, for example, under Sheets, uh, you'll see the name, the team position, salary, fantasy points, points per dollar. This is the even strength line they project to be on. This is the power play line they project to be on. And this is Sheets value score, which is, again, my kind of take on uh, point per dollar as a function of, of just raw points. Uh, and then projected ownership. Um, you could download this if you'd like, if you wanted to screw around with it, or if you wanted to also manually upload it to your own version of SaberSim or, or, or your other, whatever optimizer you use, you can certainly do this as well. Um, now, if you are a SaberSim user, okay, if you go into tools, SaberSim, and let's just go to new version, for example, I think it's important to kind of guide you to see where everything is here. Because I usually don't use it from this I usually use my own version of SaberSim. So I logged on here. I just wanted to see what's up. So the most important thing is that, you know, is which projections and which ownership you use. Because if you click on this, you have a choice between SaberSims, Sheets, and the average. And what you need to be aware of is that the Sheets projections are all the way at the, at the right here. Um, uh, we're, we're trying to change that so they're a little more visible, but... Currently, this is where they are. So don't get frustrated if you can't see them. But you are going to want to click on this 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 wheel and figure out whether you want to use Saber Sims. I don't know if, if Goldie's going to put it up. Uh, it will be a Goldie check mark, and then you could average them or whatever you want. Okay. Um, so that's how you access the data. But the real fun is is trying to figure out what to actually do. Um, so what I like to do, and we'll we'll deal with it from this slate, is I like to start with just the raw projections and see what I think, you know, uh, 
see what I think we should be getting to and things like that. Oh, this is, we got to get rid of this because this is getting in the way of my total. Let's get, let's do this. Yeah. Um, so I like, I like to start with the Sabres and look so I can see what these games sort of look like. And these are not the Vegas totals, these are the Sabres and totals, which are usually pretty good. And I like to get a sense for what I think we'd be getting to. Now, I think that these need to be adjusted a little bit. I don't think these are the actual totals, um, but this is where you'll actually see it. As a matter of fact, let's go, for example, let's go into the sports book, DK sports book for today and see what these totals look like. That's be very odd if those are the actual totals. Um, yeah. So it's five and a half, five and a half, six, five and a half, five and a half and six. So these are, uh, well, actually these are looking good actually. So this is 5.7. 5.9 and 6. Yeah, so these are just all projected to be pretty low-scoring games here. Um, so, first thing you would note is that Seattle, 3.2. Florida, 3.1. Utah, 3.4. You'd expect that the majority or you know, a good amount of the good plays would be coming from these, from these teams. Um, and again, I don't do this in any other sport except for hockey. I really try to go from the bottom up what to expect, then what to see projection-wise, and then building. So I'm expecting to see Seattle's, Florida's, and Utah's as the main teams. But then when we go into the projections, um, let's go back. Actually, let's pull up my sheet separately. You'll be able to see this if you go back, but just so that I can look at it. Like If you went back to the, um, to the main page, this is what you'd see. Um, and I like to rank the, all the players by sheets value score. And I think that's the default on say on uh true DFS as well, just to get a sense for who I think are going to be the good plays. And what we're looking for here, remember, it's a combination of projections and correlations. So what you'd like to see in hockey are guys from the same team that are on the same line that all project well. I mean, that's that's kind of gold, right? If you can get the best projected guys all playing on the same line, that's terrific. Now, if you could also get that low ownership, that's that's like almost impossible, but but that would be nice too. Um, so the first thing I look at is this page, and I see immediately that the two top sheets value score guys are both on the same power play line. So uh, I would imagine that my top overall stack, if I were hand building, was gonna would be starting with these two guys, Gunther and, and Hayden from Utah. And then what I'd probably do is look at the next one from that line. And that would be Clayton Keller. He's on the first power play line too. So that would be kind of the way I would kind of start thinking about who I would want to get to. And then the next thing I notice is you have this kind of random one-off. Well, not random because you have two pretty strong values from Chicago uh, under 5k and their, their ownership is pretty low as well. And not only that, but they're on the same line. And not only that, but they're in that Utah game. So you could have a kind of a game stack going with all five of these first guys in, in the in the list. Now, again, when you get into seven and eight game slates, where we can, you know, probably for tomorrow, this becomes a little, you know, more difficult. You don't see this kind of bunching like this, but that's what you're kind of looking for. And then the next thing you look at is the two Florida guys, you know, uh, both on the same line power play line whatever so sometimes what i'll do is i'll see what a hand-built lineup will look like with this analysis uh uh based on you know uh based on what we just did so what we'll do is we'll pull up a DraftKings. um where is this uh we'll just pull up a DraftKings lineup and see if we can build with um with with the top guys now, I can imagine we we're going to be able to. Let's just take a look. All right, so let's clear the field here, and this is not necessarily what we're playing, but again, just to give us a, a clue. So we're looking for Gunther, Hayden, and Keller to start. So let's put those in. Uh, Utah. Uh, who is the center? Uh, Hayden. And then 
Gunther, Keller to start off with. And then the other one I mentioned, I didn't mention a, a fourth or fifth one yet. So we could also then put in these two Chicago guys. That would be Bertuzzi and Hall. And we're really off to the races here. You know, we could probably get in whatever whatever we want. Now, again, depending on what kind of correlation you want, you could, you could probably get away with even playing these two Florida guys, you know, uh, uh, Verhage and, and Barkov. We definitely have, I think we have the money to do that. So, but we don't even, we don't have all the spots because we use like all these wings. So maybe you could do a one-off of Barkov or something like that. Any defenders in here that, that, that are part of these, Lines that we talked about. Yeah, you probably want to play Dursey from Utah, but he's not on that power play line. So it'd probably be this guy, Sergachev. He is on the, the number one regular line and the number one power play line. So I think that that's where we would start as far as defenders. And we put Sergachev in here. And I don't really need to fill the rest of this out, but you can see how this is going to build itself. Um, maybe what you'll do is, is, is identify a goalie that... It's kind of cheap. That rates well. You don't want to play Utah because you're going to probably play the white, the, the Chicago guys also. But you can play Bobrowski at 8K. I mean, any of these guys are fine. Um, you don't want to play Corpusello because you're going against the Florida. So we could play Bobrowski. Um, let's see. Sergio Bobrowski. Oh, where, where's the goalie? Oh. Bobrowski. And the rest is very, very easy to fill in. So you could hand build today very, very simply. Now, I will caution you that if, since I was able to do this really easily, I bet you everybody else is. So this type of build is probably going to be extremely popular. But what is kind of cool about this is this is the latest game on the slate. So... Um, if in fact things aren't going your way and you want to get a little lower own pieces from these games instead, um, you can certainly do that. Okay. So that's hand building. Now what I would do next is just really just let Sabersim kind of do its thing. So we are already using, it says, just make sure the sheets projections and let's just build lineups. Now you don't really have to build 5,000. Um, with a three-game slate. But you know what? As long as it's going to let you, I mean, you may as well. But before you do that, here's a little trick. You're going to want to upload your contests that you've already made in here. It makes your doing your sims a lot easier. And so, I, first of all, I do recommend you making dummy lineups in DraftKings before you even start doing this stuff. And then we upload them. And so you see they're all in there right now. Okay. Then you go back to your build. And then we hit build lineups and then it's going to build 5,000 lineups. Now for a three game slate, it's not as, as interesting to me as the eight game slate, because I really like to make those, you know, those determinations of what stacks to use where in three game slates, it's not as important to have five man stacks. Um, so it's, it's definitely not as interesting of a slate. Um, but uh, let's just go through the process anyway. So again, 5,000 lineups. We're, we're never, we're not going to need more than this that I promise you on a three game slate. So don't worry about not sampling from the best lineups. Let's see if this finishes. Okay. So this finished nicely. Now earlier, the sim, the Sims weren't running all that quickly, but one thing that you can do if you wanted to, before you even did anything is you could take a look at your stack exposure and see what kinds you have. And, uh, you know, in 150 lineups, on a small slate, I think this is okay to get all the, these Bow Wow stacks, okay? Um, in bigger slates, I would probably X out a lot of these, but and stick to five twos, sixes, you know, four threes. But on a small slate, I'm just going to kind of let it roll. And then, again, if it's working right, again, the Sims for Saberson were a little slow today, you would just literally hit this contest Sim button, and what it is going to do for you is it's going to take your 5,000 lineups and compare them to the field of lineups that Sabersim believes the field is going to play and uh, or the portfolio of lineups that Sabersim feels the field is going to play. 
and just kind of rank your lineups based on your expected ROI against that field. And that's where, again, the art kind of comes into it. Well, I mean, it is actually a science, but, but we don't know exactly what to do. I mean, it's very difficult to figure out what the field is going to do. Sabersim, you know, they say they back tested their method. You could look at other ways to do it. You could, you could, you could, you could use your own 5,000 lineups as the representative simulation of what the field is going to do, but whatever it is, you need something. Um, and then, Ooh, it looks like the saber sim thing is, has filled. Um, now there's a lot of things you could ways you could do this. I like the autofill because what the autofill does is it doesn't duplicate any lineups in anything. And I think that's actually pretty, um, I think that's healthy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build all these and what it's going to do, it's, it's, it's simmed all of these contests and it took your 5,000 lineups and it's going to put the most highly projected ROI lineups for each individual contest. So we're just going to hit save. And it saved 152 lineups of three contests. And what's notable is that, again, there's not a single duplicate lineup. Then we're just going to hit this, download entry to SaberSim, uh, to DraftKings. And then we're going to upload this. And then we are going to be uh, all set. Now, what I have done, okay, is in my opinion, like, I mean, the bare minimum of what you you have to do, okay, for um, for all sports really, and specifically for hockey, okay. Um, what I've done nothing of is my own takes. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I did have some takes in the projections, um, but aside from that, I made no tweaks. I did nothing different. I didn't check to even see who I had. You know, I didn't. Say, like, for example, let's look at team stacks. Ooh, 36%. You know what I mean? Like 44% Utah. I want less of that, you know, or oh my God, I don't want 16%. I want to upload, I want to change that. And yeah, you can do that. Um, and that's I think where you do well, you do it's called it's really playing exploitatively in a in a way. You know, you you could argue that you have a good set of projections, you run the Sims then you're almost playing GTO. In other words, you're playing a pretty pretty efficient way of playing that you really can't stop other people from playing as well. Um, I mean, you can. I mean, what you could do is is you play different, con you, you use different uh, contest fields than other people, which you're probably going to do, um, and different projections, which you're probably going to do. So, so it's not exactly GTO, right? You are playing exploitively because your projections are a little different, hopefully a little better. Your fields, are, your fields are a little bit better, whatever. Um, but if you want to put some no ball stuff in, in other words, if you happen to think that, I don't know, some player stinks and you don't want to play him, you can certainly do it at this point. And that's all, that's when you get into this kind of business. You know, you, you, you pull up your lineups here and then you can go ahead and um, uh, you get into your, your, your lineups and then you could, um, then you can mess around with that a little bit. There was this was build one. Where are my what projects? All my lineups exactly. I think they disappeared on me. Maybe I I don't know what what I did with them actually, but um, they are there somewhere. Oh, direct fill. That's where you see them all. Okay. Um. So, like, if I wanted to, I don't know. Look at my goalie. We could, we could X him out, like, for example, okay, and then rebuild my lineups or, or it probably will do it for you, whatever. Um, but the, the process I went through right there was was really what I do. I mean, I, I'm not the type to try to make a lot of changes. I, I like my projections. I like my ownerships. I like my I like the the my my, my method of, of limiting stacks, you know, and things like that. Um, so I don't really like to make my no ice or no ball changes or no puck changes. Because I feel as though I will do more damage than good. But if you are a hockey expert or if you just have a feeling about these things, yeah, go ahead and do it. Um, but that's pretty much my process. And uh, it applying to this particular slate, that's what it would look like. 
Um, and but obviously there there are other things you need to be aware of. You know, like you you, you don't want to do this until you know a half hour before lock because you could be line changes and injuries and things like that. And when you have a slate like this where you have these big gaps, you always want a late swap. You know, you want to wait until because what Sabersim does, I I hope this year is it'll update the ownerships um, based on what information we have from these early games. And so once you have that information, you're always better off rerunning everything um, in every one of these kind of like time gaps. That, that could be for another video, um, but uh, that is something that's extremely important to make sure that you late swap if you are around. And I guess that's going to do it. Uh, I'm looking forward to a really, really good hockey season and uh, good luck, everybody.